Okay, today is November the 2nd. Make this just a little bit clear. We're going to do the warm up. We're going to write, let's write our EQs first. And then let's do the warm up. We have notes today on parallel and perpendicular lines. Then afterwards, we're going to um, do some practice problems on graphing and stuff like that. Just practice. Your homework tonight, I only want you to work on the Delta Math. Delta math assignment, cross out Tuesday and work on the Delta math assignment, please. Cross out Tuesday and work on the Delta math assignment. I'm going to pause for the calls to give you a chance to write. Okay. I'm cross out, go ahead and cross out. Tuesday's homework, please. Let's look at the warm up. We're going to mark out number one. We're going to do number two. I want you to do number two. Number three, let's just do one, two, three of these. Finding the range values. What your Y values are for these three. You have three Y values. Okay. Then you're going to solve here, solve this equation. Linear, nonlinear. This is squared. Since you have, since X is squared, it's nonlinear. Okay, this makes a U-shaped line. This is a quadratic function. You'll learn that towards the end of the year. That is a quadratic function. It makes a U-shaped line. These are called quadratic functions. Your M and your B is what you should answer for number six. I'm going to give you a little time to get these done. I'm not going to go over them. I'm going to give you about four five, six minutes. If you need help with any of these, then just raise your hand. Questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, I'm going to pause for the calls to give you time to complete. That was the question about number four. All right, so with number four, you have to move the variables to the same side. So it doesn't matter which one you decide you want to move. You can move this one. When you move that, this is gone, and you're left with one fourth. Bring down the equal. This gives you three over four. This, the denominators are the same. You're going to subtract the numerators. What's one minus um, two? We got no. Yeah, you got negative one um, plus two, which is the same as saying. 2 minus 1. What's this equal to? 1. Equal to 1. All right, so that's 1 on the top. And what on the bottom? 3. three. Okay. So now what do we do to get y by itself? What do we move first? Elijah? Um, you multiply by the reciprocal. Well, you are going to multiply by the reciprocal, but you're going to do that last. What do you do before that? Yes. Mm -mm. Yes. Subtract three over four. So when I subtract three over four on both sides, what does that give me here? Negative two fourths or what? Okay. And on this side, we're left with one over three. What? Why? Okay. So now what do we do? Somebody had already said it earlier. How do we get rid of the one-third? Yes. 
Multiply by the what? What's the reciprocal of one third? Three over one, three over one or just three, right? Okay. So here, what does this give us? Negative three over two is equal to y. All right. That's the only one that I saw that people had questions about. All right. Anybody else? I'll pause to give you a chance to please take out your interactive notebook. Okay, good people. I want to go over a little bit more of the graphing and then we're going to do some notes on parallel and perpendicular. Take out the sheet from yesterday on graphing, not the new sheet, it's two completely different sheets. Here we go. Let's work on number three. First thing we need to look for is to see if it's written in slope intercept form. I'm going to wait just a little longer because I see some people are still fidgeting. All right, here we go. This equation is already written in slope intercept form. That's the first step. The second step is to label our M and our B. What's the M in this equation here? What's one. the M? One. one. How do you write one as a fraction? One, one over one. So top number is our rise. The bottom number is our run. Okay. What is our B in this equation? One. one. Okay. One. So now we're going to find B, the y-intercept, on the y-axis. Positive 1 on the y-axis is right here. This is where we plot our first point. This is the starting amount. Now we use our slope to put other points on the line. So from this point, rise says 1, positive 1. So that means I go up 1. Run says positive 1. So that's up 1 to the right 1. Up 1, right 1. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. Go until you run out of space. If you want to put points in the opposite direction, you have to do this backwards. So instead of it being positive one, it's going to be negative one on the top. Positive one, instead of that, it's going to be negative one. Why? Because a negative divided by a negative is still going to give us this positive one over one. It's the same, very equivalent. So now you're going to go down one to the left one. Down one, left one. Put your point there. Down one, left one. 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 Go until you run out of space. Connect your points and make sure you put arrows at the end of the line. That's an indication that the line is continued without N. Any questions? Yes, babe. You need one? Can you give him one, please? Anybody else missing a sheet? Okay. All right. Let's look at number. Let's look at number four. It's written in slope intercept form. Let's label our M and our B. Hatcher, what's your M in this equation? What's our M? Kyle? Uh, it's, uh, four over 
4 over 3. The number that's attached to x is the m. It's going to be 4 over 3. The top number is our rise. The bottom number is our run. What's our b? Yes. Negative 4. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. After you make sure that the equation is written in slope-intercept form, then you're going to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Now we're going to find the y-intercept on the y-axis. Negative 4 on the y-axis is down 4. This is negative 1, 2, 3. This is negative 4. This is where your starting point. Graph the y-intercept on the y-axis. Now you're going to use your slope, your rise over your run, to put points on the line. Your rise is positive 4, so go up 4. Your run is positive 3, so go to the right 3. So it's up 4 and to the right 3. Up, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right, 1, 2, 3. Up, 1, 2, 3, 4. And over to the right, one, two, three. Okay? If I wanted points in the opposite direction, instead of it being positive four, it's negative four. Instead of being positive three, it's negative three, which is equal to positive four over three. They are equivalent. Negative divided by negative is still going to be a positive. Yes. Mm -hmm. That means you go down four and to the left three, and we don't have enough space to do that. Connect your points and extend your line. Make sure you put arrows at the end of your line. Number five. What's my M and B for number five? What's my M and B? Yes. It is. How do I write my M as... A fraction. Yes. Very good. Put a one under it. The top number is going to be what? Rise. The bottom number is going to be what? Okay. So that means I go down three and to the right one. Down three, right one. Down three, right one. What do I do after I label my M and my B? What do I do after that? What do I do? Yes. Very good. Find negative 3, the starting amount, or your y-intercept on the y-axis. Negative 3 is here on the y-axis. Now I go from this point, where am I going? Up or down? Down. Down how many? Three. One, two, three, and then go where? Right. right one. I don't have enough space to continue that, so I go in the opposite direction. That means that instead of this being negative, it's going to be positive. Instead of this being positive, it's going to be negative, which is still equal. They are equivalent. So now you're going to go up three and to the left one. So up one, two, three, left one. Up one, two, three, left one. Up one, two, three, left one. Up one, two, three, and left one. Connect your points. Make sure you put arrows at the end of your line. You okay? Number six. Y is equal to four. How do I graph Y is equal to four? I find four on the Y axis. Four on the Y axis is up. One, two, three, four. This is where I put my point. And since it's just y is equal to 4, I draw a line through the y-axis. This is how I graph y is equal to 4. If it was y is equal to 7, I find 7 on the y-axis and draw a line through it. That means it's zero slope. If, yes, baby, like x would go down. The B here, of course, is 4. If it says Y is equal to a negative 6, 
then you find negative six and draw neg line through negative six on the line. Okay, so let's go to eight where it's X is equal to five. I need to find five on the X axis. Five on the X axis is one, two, three, four, five. And draw a line through the X axis. What kind of slope is this? Undefined. And what's the y-intercept? Zero. None. It doesn't go through zero. It doesn't go through y at all. Okay. Any questions about that? Is there anyone that's lost with graphing this? Okay. At the end of class, I want you to, to finish this part, okay? We don't have enough time. That's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Let's go to our interactive notebook. This is our practice sheet for the interactive notebook here. So we can fold. I'm going to fold this and show you kind of how to fold it so we can paste it in. Fold it just like this. And I fold it like this. This so that I can paste this at the bottom of the page. And then paste it down here. But don't paste it until you finish it because it's hard to graph on the sheet if it's already in your notebook. Okay, so after you finish it, just paste it down. Any questions about what's supposed to go on page nine? Yes. We did page nine yesterday. If you don't have enough room on this page, just do page nine, continue, and paste it here. Say again, baby? Yes. This is for page nine. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Okay, let's move on to page 10, please. We are writing equations for parallel lines. going to be very basic very very basic parallel lines parallel lines are lines that never cross each other They're in the same plane but never cross each other parallel lines are lines that are in the same plane or flat surface and never cross or never intersect. So examples of what that looks like. You have Super important to know that parallel lines have the same slope. They 
they have the same slopes. So if the slope of this line is three, the slope of this line is three. That's why they never run into each other because the rise over run is the same. So they never cross each other because they have the same exact slope. Yes. Who was after? Um, okay. Ian? Yes. Yes, baby. Okay, thank you. Girls' bathroom is closed, guys, so please don't ask girls to go to the restroom. Your bathroom is closed. All right, I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write. Let's do some examples of writing the equations. All right, number one, write the equation for y is equal to 2x plus 10. Wait a minute. Right equation for the line that is parallel, sorry, to y is equal to 2x plus 10. And goes through the point. Five. Let's do five and six. So you're going to write an equation for the line that's parallel to this line right here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, first things first is you have to identify what the slope is. What is the slope of this line right here? Y is equal to 2x plus 10. 2. M is equal to 2. So is M is, if M is equal to 2 for this line, M is going to be equal to 2 for the other line as well. Any questions about that? What's missing in order to write the equation? We know what the slope is. But what do we need to write the equation for the second line? We got the first line. We need the second line. What do we need in order to write an equation, Peyton? We need to find out what B is. Any ideas as to how we could find... Move this curse out the way. Any ideas as to how we could find B? Yes. Okay. Very good. We could use this point right here. This is our x. This is our y. And just like he stated, we can use the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And we could substitute the val these values in to find b. All right. So look, what are we going to put in the place of y? What are we going to put in the place of y? Yes. 6 is equal to, what are we going to put in the place of m? What are we? 2 times what's x five plus what b okay so now what do we do in order to solve for b yes and what does that give you 10 so now what do we do to solve for b yes Dalton. subtract 10 good job and what does that give us for b negative four so now we know B is negative 4 and M is 2. So what's going to be that other, what's going to be that other equation? Peyton? Y equals 2x minus 4. Y equals 2x minus 4. Excellent. This is the other line. Any questions about that? Yes, but you need to wait. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we're going to do writing equations for perpendicular lines.
Again, we're going to have more examples, no worries, but I do want to get the notes in for this. This is page, what I say, 11? This is 11? Yep. Writing equations uh, for perpendicular lines. Making sure I use the same verbiage. Okay, writing equations for perpendicular lines. This one's going to be easy too, okay, y'all? That's going to be easy. By definition, perpendicular lines, they do cross each other to form four right angles. Okay, so for perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines are lines that cross each other to form four right angles. Are lines that cross each other and we can infer that they're in the same flat surface because they cross okay lines that cross each other to form four right angles how many degrees are right angles? 90, 90 degrees. Okay. And what does that look like? When you graph them, it looks like this, okay? I don't know which one. I think you did. He did come first. Go ahead, baby. All right, so you have lines that look like this, four right angles here. Each of these are 90 degrees. I'll just draw it perfectly. Let me turn my paper so it'll seem like draw across this way. Okay, these are also four right angles, okay? So it doesn't have to always be look perfect, but you should be able to turn it and see that those are four right angles. And I kind of tilted my paper to make sure that it looked more, it was more realistic that it's a right angle. These are all 90 degrees. All right, are we finished writing? All right, so let's do an example, okay? Number one. Write the equation for the line that is perpendicular Uh, y is equal to, let's do 3 over 4. 3 over 4x, let's do plus 5, okay? And goes through point, um, let's do, move this down so it's not in the way, let's go through point, uh, negative two and three, all right, I need to put a little caption up here, a little star, because it's important, important. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. 
not the same slopes like parallel but opposite reciprocal so miss reyes what does opposite mean that means one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative why is that so miss reyes because look guys look this line is positive right has a positive slope this line has a negative slope this line has undefined slope and this line has zero slope so they're opposites okay all right so an example of opposite reciprocal slope if the slope is um one half what would the slope of the other line be if it's perpendicular negative what and no it's negative no the two over one negative two over one or just two that's opposite one's positive one negative reciprocal means you flip the numerator and the denominator all right so let's try number one let's try number one what's the slope of this line right here y is equal to three over four sorry i didn't mean to cut you off baby What's the slope of this line right here? Three fourths. So what's the slope of the other line going to be? Negative four over three. Very good. Okay. So what's missing? How do we find out? How do we write the equation? What do we have? What is missing that we need to find? Yes. B. We need to figure out what B is. How do we find, how do we find B? What do we use to find B? Yes. We use Y equals MX plus B. And what do we, what do we do with that? Sorry. What do we do with that? We use Y equals, yes. Okay. We substitute the values in that they give us. Okay. What values are we going to use or what value are we going to use for Y? three this is x this is y so we're going to use three it's equal to what negative four over three times what number negative two and we can put negative two over one right plus b okay now let's multiply straight across what's a negative times a negative that's a positive four and two times two 8 over 3 plus B. Okay. So now what do we do to get B by itself? Subtract 8 over 3 on both sides. Okay. This is B on this side. Okay. So what's 3 minus 8 over 3? What's the mixed number for 8 over 3? We know. Two and two thirds. So if that's the case, what's three minus two? And what you say? Two thirds. One and one third. Uh, and is it positive or negative? Negative. It's negative. So. Hmm. Take away two more thirds. So oh, yeah. Third. So it's just one third. Okay, so now we have M and we have B. How do we use this information to write the equation? How do we do that? How do we use this information to write the equation? Elijah? Um, Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Look, I want you to copy. Look at the sheets that I gave you to do for tomorrow and make sure that you understand how to do them. Okay. I'm going to pause for the calls. Okay. Oh, help me. Sorry, y'all. Negative one third. Sorry, sweetheart. All right. Okay, guys. Make sure that you get the sheets that I gave you tomorrow. Make sure you get those done. Okay. Make sure you put your calculator back, please.